Hello, the topic of today's lesson was to continue with slope fields and differential equations in general. Uh, the topics covered in this video will be a, a brief word uh, about tangent line approximations in that context. Um, talking about dy over dx as a function of just x, as in this uh, example here, um, when dy over dx is a function of y, as is the case here, or as is often the case when we're dealing with um, this kind of problem, when dy over dx includes both x and y. And finally, a quick word on the infamous hot potato FRQ of 2017, which will be assigned for homework. In class, we were to do the, this FRQ from 2008, number 5. And I'm trusting that the other slope field video that I did will cover most of what you need to know, need to, know to do this FRQ. But notice that I, asked, I added a, a couple custom parts on my own here that we were to do in class. So I want to focus specifically on that one that I just highlighted. And let me make it a little bigger here. OK, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the slope field. OK, there. So what we're being asked to do here is to use the initial condition f of 2 equals 0, write an equation for the tangent line to that graph at the point where x equals 2, and then use it to approximate f of 1.9. Uh, let's go ahead and just do that task and then talk a little bit about what did we just accomplish with it. OK, even if you're not sure exactly where you're going with this answer, as soon as you see the, the words tangent line or line tangent to the graph, that should make us think of the point-slope form that we typically use for linear equations. So let me write that here. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And when you think about what information you have, that can help you start filling in that equation. Notice that the initial condition provides you with some useful information. The x value is 2. The given y value is 0. And as far as the m value goes, we know that a derivative is what will give us the slope. So let's look to the original derivative equation that we were given. We'll plug in those same x and y values, x equals 2 and y equals 0. And from that, we are given that the slope dy over dx equals negative 1 over 4. So that's what we can fill in in our linear equation. And there we have it our tangent line. Make sure you avoid the common mistake that I see where students just plug in the expression for dy over dx, such as y minus 1 over x squared. Don't do that because in the presence of those variables there, notice that this is not a linear equation. We've got an x and an x squared and a y involved. That's not linear unless you have a constant in front like we do here. So there's the tangent line. As far as the second part of this question goes, using it to approximate f of 1.9, I have a feeling that even if you don't know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, that you, you have a hunch that probably the appropriate thing to do is to replace the x in this tangent line equation with 1.9. So let's do that. And again, we'll explain in a moment here what this all means. So plugging in 1.9 for x, we've got negative 1 fourth here. If there had been a constant other than 0 here, I would move it to the right side so that I could have y by itself. But in this case, y is already essentially by itself. So we have negative 1 fourth, and then 1.9 minus 2 is negative 0.1, or negative 1 tenth if you prefer. And I can simplify that further to 1 40th, or if I want that is equal to 0 0.025. And reminder of something that I think you already know, any of these expressions is, is acceptable on an FRQ. We really could have stopped right there. Um, but any of these expressions, they're all equivalent, so they're all good. And those are going to serve as our approximation for f of 1.9. So f of 1.9, and I'll put the little approximately equals to symbol there. Now, a student can do all that and earn all the points for this question, but it occurs to me that a, a student may still have no idea of what this accomplished. So let me say a quick word on that. All right, here's the slope field for the question at hand. 
which is dy over dx equals y minus 1 over x squared. And here is also a solution curve for f of x. Notice that the c value in this case is that 0.5 up there in the exponent. Um, so as if I vary that c value, we see how it affects the curve. Um, in this case, to pass through the 0 0.20, a c value of 0 0.5 is required. Uh, again, I'm assuming that previous lessons would allow you to get to this point on the FRQ of solving for that particular solution that goes through 2,0. Notice how smoothly the curve flows through the slope field. Here is the tangent line that we just solved for. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the slope field. And the observation to be made here is that if we zoom in on that point of tangency, we zoom in on the point of tangency, notice that the tangent line is a pretty good approximation for the curve itself. Especially when you look at the x value of 1.9, uh, it's really hard to distinguish the difference between the curve and the tangent line. I've just displayed the points um, at x equals 1.9, the point r, the orange point there, is on the tangent line itself, and the point q the blue point there is on the curve itself, and again, notice how close they are to each other. Notice numerically how close their y values are. So the idea here is that if you had only had the slope field or, uh, um, and came up with that tangent line equation, even if you hadn't been able to solve for this exact particular solution, if you had used the tangent line um, to find that point r, it would be a decent approximation um, for the actual value um, represented by that point Q. I hope that made sense. So looking at this numerically, we see that 0.025, which is the 1 40th that we computed, and we see that the actual value of f of 1.9 is 0.02597. Again, really close when you're dealing with a point that is close to the point of tangency. Now, if I zoom back out, Clearly, the tangent line would not do a very good job of predicting uh, or approximating values of the function far away from the point of tangency. So you want to make sure you use tangent line approximations only for values that are close to the point of tangency, x equals 2 in this case. Much more that could be said about tangent line approximations, but I'm hoping that's enough to satisfy you for right now. Okay, back to the slides. Let me go on to the next topic here. In class, I would challenge students to mix and match the um, differential equations with the slope fields. And if you feel up to the challenge, of course, I welcome you to try that out. This is another topic where there's a lot more that could be said about it, but I'm going to just leave it at this for this video. Let me go to the next slide here. Notice that when you have a differential equation that is only a function of x, as is dy over dx equals cosine x, that's saying that those slopes only depend on x. If you look at any given column there, so right there, for example, where every point has the same x value, notice that the slope doesn't change at all. Any vertical column where the x values are the same, the slopes are all the same, and I hope that makes sense to you. A consequence of that observation is that when you take your solution, the c value has the effect of just allowing the curve to vertically translate. Here is the solution in that case, y equals sine of x plus c, and the c is a vertical translation. Similarly, when we turn our attention to this bottom equation here, dy over dx equals y squared, when the slopes only depend on y values, that means that any horizontal line you draw or any horizontal row of points will have the same slopes. The slopes only depend on the y value, not on the x value. And again, a consequence of that, let me just display the equation, the consequence is that the c has a, the effect of imparting a horizontal translation on our solution curve, on our general solution curve. But we notice that when we have x and y present in the differential equation, we notice that it's not as simple as just being able to horizontally or vertically translate our solution. Notice that any vertical row of points has different slopes, as well as any horizontal row of points um, has different slopes as well. Here is the solution for that one. Since c 
in those equations is embedded underneath that radical symbol. It's not as simple as just a horizontal or a vertical translation. The other solution curves would look something like, whoops, I'm drawing with a mouse here, so sorry, my drawing looks pretty awful there, but our other solution curves might look like this. Not simple horizontal or vertical translations of our original solution curve. All right, so if I go back to the previous slide, and if you're up to the challenge and you want to see if that observation can help you mix and match the slope fields, I'll um, reveal the solutions here in just a moment. I will say there are other observations to be made that could help you discern the, the answer choices in a problem like this. But let's see how you do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and re assume you've paused if you chose to do so and reveal the answers here. One matches with slope field D, two matches with a, three matches with C, and four matches with B. Of course, feel free to contact me for office hours if you want some more discussion on that. All right, and final topic for this video, let me say a word about one of the more inf infamous FRQs in recent years. Here is the differential equation featured in the 2017 hot potato FRQ. Uh, I happened to grade that that question in Kansas City over the summer. And here's one of my score sheets for that question, keeping in mind that all um, that these are all out of nine points. Notice this page full of misery. All these students who got zeros, look at all the zeros on that page. Um, there's one bright spot up here, the 315, means that that student got the three points, one point, and five points in parts A, B, and C respectively. So that was the, the one perfect score for that question that I saw on this entire page amongst a sea full of zeros. And if you're wondering, the little dash means that the student just didn't even try, left the page entirely blank. So this was, a, this was far and away the most difficult question that year. And I'm assigning it to you for homework with the claim that it really didn't have to be that difficult. No offense to the students who, who suffered on this one. But my opinion is that what really threw students off is the fact that the equation in question did not have the familiar x and y. It had different variables, h and t. Now, we've seen t quite a bit, h not so much. Um, but I'm going to speculate that if we think about how we would have handled this with a y and an x, you would pretty quickly go, oh, I know what to do here. Imagine that we had, instead of dh over dt on the left side, imagine if we had our more comfortable, our more familiar dy over dx. Well, what would have to change on the right side of the equation? That h would become a what, x or y? Well, a mistake that a lot of students made uh, um, on that question when I was grading it was a lot of them treated that as if that were the independent variable in x, when it really should have been treated as the y. Since the left side was, was dh over dt, and this is an h here, that corresponds to the y that I put up here. And again, I'm going to speculate that when you look at it now, you have some ideas on how to handle that, and you could go forward. So to be clear, I would recommend that you stick with the original variables dh or, or h and t. Um, but if you really if you find that you're having trouble moving forward with this one, go ahead and replace the h and the t with an, a y and an x and get the ball rolling, see what you can do, but just make sure that when you're answering the actual FRQ that you use the variables provided to you, h and t. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, and in previous years when I've assigned, in the years since then, since I, when I've assigned this problem, it seemed to go pretty well when students looked at it from that perspective. So don't be afraid of the hot potato. I'll leave you with this. As much as I don't want to simply laugh at someone else's despair, I do imagine that a lot of students felt solace that year looking at all the social media tweets regarding that hot potato. So here are a few that I captured from that year. All right, please contact me if anything in the video uh, didn't make sense. Bye.